such a difference. How she said it. Watch this. <laughs> <laughs> But Andrea, how do I know what I like? Well? Well, look next time. Use your eyes. They ain't supposed to just be hazel. They're supposed to do some goddamn work around here. This ain't for play. I don't do this for fun. You gotta look, baby. This thing fall and burn me. They just gotta know when to hold them. Know when to fold them. Know when to walk away. Know when to run. That's a good song. I don't wanna get copyrighted, so we're gonna stop right there. What's up everybody? My name is Andrea. If you're new here and if you are, feel free to hit that subscribe button down below. And to my OG subscribers, thanks for tuning back in and welcome back to another video. Okay guys, I know I'm in rare form today. I look crazy. Ah! But I got stuff to do. I needed to film a video. And there are just not enough hours in the day. Like, I don't know how people have chaps. Like, I, I can't. I even had to make me a little matcha with, mixed with chai, because... Uh, mm. That's good. I need a little extra energy, but this won't take long. I don't even wear like foundation or anything like that. Just a little, you know, stuff to make me look awake. And then I'm gonna put on some regular clothes, but I thought this would save me some time. So yeah. So while I'm giving you different here, this is also gonna be a different video cause it's not a haul. You guys know I do a lot of those because I do a lot of shopping, but today it's gonna be all about my secrets to shopping at home goods without looking like you shop at home goods. So my first tip, you have to train your eye. There's just no way around it. You have to figure out what you like. Even if you hire like an interior designer, you still have to have some kind of opinion about who you like because you pick that interior designer because you like their, their style, their aesthetic, right? So you know a little bit about something, um, you know a little bit you know a little, what am I trying to say? Oh my gosh. You know what is pleasing to your eye and you know what you want your home to kind of look like. So even if you don't want to do the footwork or you don't have the time or you just don't really feel like you have the resources or you're able to find the things you want, you hire a person, you still kind of know what you like. So that's very important. But if you honestly just don't care and you just want your place to look nice, then by all means, go sight unseen. <laughs> that rhymed. Bars. And you're probably thinking, but Andrea, how do I know what I like? Well? Well, look next time. Use your eyes. They ain't supposed to just be hazel. They're supposed to do some goddamn work around here. This ain't for play. I don't do this for fun. You gotta look, baby. You gotta do a little bit of research. So I pull inspo from a lot of different places. Instagram is really good for that. You will be surprised how many just naturally talented people there are on social media. Catherine Alderon, Colin King, Kiva Brent, all those people, Jeremiah and Nate, Jake Arnold is a really good one. And they showcase their works on social media so you can kind of hone in on what your design aesthetic is and what is pleasing to you. And you can get a lot of inspo and it's free. Now Pinterest is one of my favorites. Mm, that's a little bit too much. glue. I feel like this lighting is crazy. This is the part I dread the most, the lashes, but they're so necessary. Like y'all see the difference? Like it just makes me look awake. Such a difference. How she said it. Watch this. <laughs> <laughs> Woo. 
Now with Pinterest, I love it because it does the work for you. So you kind of, what's the word I'm looking for? Ooh, you kind of, curate, that's what I'm looking for. You kind of curate your news feed by the stuff you click on the most. So I'll show you on the screen what mine usually looks like. So what I usually do, I usually just go to my, you know, just go to Pinterest, open up, it opens up your news feed and it shows stuff that you've been interested in, stuff that you have pinned before. And then what you can do is you can click on one image and if you scroll down, it'll show you similar images. Engines. <laughs> It'll show you similar images and you have to be careful because you can go down a rabbit hole Like I'll go on there to look for a quote or something to put on Instagram like on my stories But I'll get stuck on the home page and I'll keep scrolling and next thing I know it's been 10 minutes And I haven't done what I've gone on there to do, but it's a really good resource to look at different stuff to um, like I said curate a mood board or um, they have Pinterest boards where it can be like decor, wardrobe, food info. So that's a really good resource, one of my all time favorites. And of course, my top, top recommendation, coffee table books. I love a good coffee table book. You guys know this, I own so many, and it's nothing like having that inspiration in your hands and actually looking through them. So I actually buy coffee table books that I'm gonna look through because I don't believe in wasting money. Um, and they also serve as decor. So stick these on your coffee table, console table, anywhere, and you're good to go. But like I said, I draw a lot of inspiration from these books. This one is Bespoke and Beyond, one of my favorites. Kind of pricey, but so worth it. But in real life, books have really been very informative in teaching me what my design aesthetic is, a lot about the design world, and I read these books, so I invest in the ones that actually appeal to what I'm trying to do or things I'm interested in. So I highly suggest you guys invest in some. Okay. I look like something, let's get dressed. So my next tip is to know a no from a no. You know, with me, I like several different styles. I love Wabi, really dig Belgian Modern, and Contemporary will always have my heart. So I buy pieces from each style, but I make sure they all kind of correlate with each other and complement each other. And since I don't have a specific design style that I like, that I stick to, it can be kind of dangerous because it broadens my aesthetic essentially. So I can buy a whole bunch of different stuff and they don't go together. What I do is try to find pieces that you won't see in every home and pieces that don't look home goodsy, if that makes sense. I also try to make sure whatever I buy will complement another piece if they're going in the same space. So these two are recent home goods finds that I've shared in a haul, and I like them because this is Wabi, and this is contemporary mixed with Wabi. So they really complement each other. This is contemporary because you got that shiny, kind of modern and sleek, but it has those little rough imperfections in it, which kind of correlate with it. So when I put these two together or in the same space, they make sense, even though they're not exactly from the same design style. Does that make sense? Good. So back to the tip, you don't need everything. You gotta have self-control, y'all. The things I just showed you are rather small, but they're all going in a bookcase, so it's fine. But it's easy to buy a lot of stuff and clutter up your space. So have self-control, and again, no a no from a no. So, case in, that rhymed. I'm about to wrap. Case in point, this was definitely a no with a K. So I kind of drew inspiration from Pinterest, like I said earlier, I do it all the time and I accidentally manifest things. When you train your eye and you look at aesthetics that you love, you kind of know what to look for without knowing you know what to look for, if that makes sense. So we all know the candle section in Home Goods is, you know, berated with different stuff. It's usually very farmhouse, but I saw this one and I just knew I needed it. I got home and put it in my windowsill because my windowsill is actually pretty big. Um, I'm actually sitting on the ledge 
right now. So I wanted it to be a little bit more, uh, this thing fall and burn me. Cause it's not, it, this one for some reason they made it without the little pokey thing on the top. So honestly, let me pour a little bit of wax on here to stick it on. There we go. That's a, that's a trick I learned. Matter of fact, you kind of melt some of the wax and then you pour it on, if your candlestick doesn't have the little thing to stick the candle on, you pour it on there, let it dry and it sticks to it. So yeah, now we're safe. But what was I saying? I don't remember what I was saying. <laughs> but yeah, it's not gonna clutter up my space. It's the perfect touch to finish up this space so it looks thought about but not make it overstated, if that makes sense. So yeah, love him. And he was only $7.99, guys. $7.99. I also, woo wee, smoky. She is my snuffer. Another example of this is a find that I shared with you guys before in my living room tour. I have this little, I guess I can call it like a little plinth side table that I bought well over five years ago and it didn't fit my design aesthetic then but I bought it for my future self because I knew my my taste would change. I was already growing out of the glam era so I bought it and now it fits perfectly in this space. So yeah, that was a no. I've also bought a lot of things that were very cool but just didn't serve my space or I didn't have space for it. Exhibit A. I found these amazing marble rectangular lamps and home goods a while back. I shut them in a haul, but I didn't have anywhere to put them. And honestly, they were a little bit too cold for my space. So my living areas are very Belgian modern-esque um, with a little bit of wabi, so everything is very warm. And that marble was a little bit too cold. And plus I had like an acrylic base. I could have painted it, but they just gotta know when to hold them. Know when to fold them. Know when to walk away, know when to run. This is a good song. I don't wanna get copyrighted, so we're gonna stop right there. But like I said, know a no from a no, and you're good to go. Next tip is to get it and ponder at home. So home goods, it's not like they have a whole bunch of stock of one piece in the back like these big box companies, right? So if you're about, I would say, maybe 80% out, I would say if you're about 80% about something, just bring it home, make sure you keep your receipt. I always print a receipt and have it emailed to me so I have a backup. Bring it home, go ahead and get it so you don't have buyer's remorse. Live with it for a month. You have 30 days, like. Take advantage, man. Take advantage. And if it doesn't work, just return it. It's that simple. Way easier than going home and thinking about it and then being like, oh, I think I want it. And then you go back and it's gone. Now you pissed off at yourself, ain't you? Yeah, I know, I've been there. It's, buyer's remorse is the worst. So go ahead and get it, bring it home, and live with it for a while. Make sure you actually put it where you're gonna see it because I have this bad habit of buying things, keeping them in the bag, putting them in my extra room, coming back to them after like three weeks, and then I'm like, do I wanna keep it? And it's a lot of pressure. So go ahead, when you bring it home, go ahead and look at it <laughs> and put it out put it where you think you want it to go and decide from there. The next tip is gonna be don't get everything from home goods. And what I mean is don't get everything from home goods. So take my coffee table for example. I'm very proud of it. It has come along so well and it's very simple but very bold at the same time. So I have a bunch of different pieces on there, right? Can you guess where the home goods piece is. Now if you're an OG subscriber and you watch my videos all the time, you already know what came from home goods and what didn't. But I'll, I'll give you a few seconds. Go ahead. All right, so here's the tea. The actual tables are from Facebook Marketplace. Trays from Zara Home. Sculpture is from Anthropology. The rose marble bases are from Etsy. Books are from Amazon, except for the Alexander McQueen one. That's from Home Goods. And then the marble ring that's sitting on the books on my taller table came from Home Goods. So I only have two pieces from Home Goods in this whole, this whole vignette, 
if you will. And if you do buy a good bit from Home Goods, which I do, make sure you space it out a lot so people can't really tell. Oh yeah, she got it from Home Goods. I seen that all the time. Like, where have you seen a coffee table set up like mine? Where is it? Uh, Where is it? It's 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 uh. Where? 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 Uh, I, 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 oh, oh, where? Where? You haven't. I promise you, you haven't. I purposely mixed a bunch of different stones and textures and made it kind of like a mood board, like a design mood board. And I think it came along very well. So if you don't take anything from what I just said, don't put all the home goods finds in one place. Mix it up. The marble ring actually was on a stand um, when I bought it, but I have been seeing these marble, like really, I don't even know how to explain it. Restoration Hardware just came out with one. I saw them initially on um, Pinterest, but I decided to take it off the ring. I decided to take it off the stand and sit on the book so it kind of gives that bold feel, even though it's hollow. Is that the word? Hollow? Even though it has a hole in the middle. So yeah, this brings me to my next tip, which is look past what's in front of you. So when you grasp this idea, I promise you it's gonna change your life. I have put a tablecloth over my headboard and it totally changed my whole bed. It looks like I bought a holding bed, but I spent $17 for the tablecloth and stapled it to the bed. So, I mean, even though that fabric was meant for a table, I used it on my bed. So you just gotta kinda know what you can use something for. Now don't get crazy though. Like don't go and be like, Oh, this is a toilet brush. I'm gonna use this as a floral stem. No, we're not doing that. It has to make sense. I like to look at the bones of a piece and decide, hmm, is this what I'm looking for? Is the foundation there? Can I spray paint it to make it look like what I want it to be? I did a whole video on how I revamped some lamps and they're sitting in my bedroom and they look so good. Like, check that out if you haven't because it saved me so much money. Restoration Hardware just recently came out with um, some plaster lamps. I originally got my idea to do it from an image I saw on Pinterest and our house has a really good one. So I already knew what I wanted to do. Like the shape of the base was there. All I had to do was buy a shade and it completely transformed the space and the lamp. So like I said, just kind of look past something and if you can make it what you want it to be and it saves you money, girl. Next tip is going to be avoid the masses. Now this kind of ties into what I said before when I said don't buy home goodsy things. And you guys know what I mean. Like you know when you go into home goods, the stuff they have all the time, the ones that are like just there year round, it doesn't really matter. Don't get those pieces. And if you do, like I have a few, paint them. Or just put them in a space where they won't look so gimmicky. Because home goods, be, they can be kind of gimmicky and kind of cheap looking if you're not careful on what you pick, okay? Also, try to resist peer pressure pieces. Andrea, what do you mean by peer pressure piece? I'm talking about the stuff you see all over your social media accounts on your stories, stuff that I share with you. Make sure you actually like it and that it actually fits your aesthetic instead of you just buying it because you saw somebody else had it. Does that make sense? So, like, do I really like this? Or do I just want this because I'm excited I found it and I saw that somebody else had it? So be very careful with that. And also look at big box companies to kind of see what you should be looking for in home goods. For example, I was out shopping with my mom the other day and she spotted this and was like, look, Dre, and I was like, oh my gosh, I need that. Now I know what you're thinking, what's special about that? That's not a dupe, see? That's why I say you gotta train your eye, you gotta, you gotta know what you're looking at. So this is actually a dupe of a very high-end piece. I will show it on the screen. It's by Faina or Fina. I'll put the name up because I'm not really sure how to pronounce it. But all I'm gonna do is paint this black, stick a stem in it, and I got the look for less. Like legit, that piece on first dibs is like $1,200 or even more than that. It's well, it's, it's over $1,000. And I only paid $24.99 for this. Yeah, 
It's a little bit smaller than the original, but it still does the job and it serves my space just fine. Next tip is to browse every aisle. People change their minds all the time in the middle of the store in an aisle where they didn't even get the piece. They take it out of their buggy and they put it where it's not supposed to be. People will put stuff in places they don't think anybody's gonna look. Like if the checkout lot is too long, they're like, okay, I'll just come back later. Let me kind of hide this. I know, cause I'm guilty of it. I used to do it all the time. I still do it, <laughs> but sometimes I forget to go back and get it. I found this amazing candlestick holder in the kitchen area and I didn't even know what it was at first. I thought it was a spice rack or a spice holder of some sort because it was in somewhere it wasn't supposed to be. And then I read the bottom and it was a candlestick holder. But yeah, just make sure you look everywhere. Look in the garden section. I found things in the kids area before. Just make sure you look everywhere. And my last tip is to go often and go to different locations. So I had a dry spell for a little while. In my area, my home goods, they didn't have anything. So I did like a whole series. If you're new here, I have several different videos of me just traveling to different places like Atlanta, Charlotte, even Boone, North Carolina, and looking at their home goods. I filmed the stores and I've actually shared what I found in those places. If your home goods isn't giving you what you needed to give, sometimes you just gonna have to go outside of your zip code. Like, it just is what it is. Okay guys, that is it for me today. Thank you so much for tuning in and spending some time with me. I hope these tips were helpful and that they will be helpful in your future shopping trips, whether it's home goods or anywhere for that matter. Sound off in the comments to let me know if you have any tips. Don't forget to like and share. Hit that subscribe button and that notification bell if you haven't. Take care of yourselves, those around you, and your mental health. And I will see you guys in my next video. But until then, peace out.